Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Planet X News. It is April 13th, 2022. Well, ladies and gentlemen, some very sad news coming out of South Africa this morning. Uh, number one, they've just undergone some very major, major flooding in the areas of Durban and just south of Johannesburg. And maybe some of you do not know, but uh, Dr. Albers uh, lived in South Africa for many, many years as she was teaching as a professor of physics at the University of Witwatersrand, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> um, right before she moved to the United States in July of 2017 to basically leave the persecution that she was undergoing for revealing information dealing with this stellar core and also what we refer to as you know planet x um dr albers was invited to deliver two speeches at an international physicists and physics convention in johannesburg and that was an invitation based on two scientific papers that she wrote and submitted to the committee. Normally, you're lucky if you get invited to uh, give a speech and a presentation on one paper. But during that time frame, uh, she was invited to speak on both of these papers. And things just got really out of hand after her dismissal from the university based on her research it was kind of like they just wanted to cover it up so they forced her into retirement and uh, that was a 17 year career of teaching that basically went down the tubes so she came to the united states to get away from all of that and continue her research, which she did. Um, Dr. Albers has an older son. I think he is in his early 20s, uh, 24, I believe, 24, 25 years old. And um, when she left, she owned a small home just south of Johannesburg, and um, she gave the house to her son. He was still at the university uh, as an engineering student, and he was just about to finish, I believe, with a, a master's in engineering and some other subjects. And he had plans to leave South Africa and go to Germany and, and work However, uh, we just got a telephone call several hours ago that during this massive flood in the, uh, the Durban area and just south of Johannesburg, um, he called and told his mother that um, the house was completely gone. Uh, it had been completely devastated. As you see in this uh, photograph, this is from the BBC a lot of land slides and um, land subsidence. Uh, the majority of these houses there, they're all built of concrete block and kind of a, a, a concrete stucco finish. Uh, if land subsides underneath them, well, as you can see, they usually crack and crumble. This photograph here is from the Durban area and it is actually closer to the Atlantic Ocean. I'll go over the maps and everything with you. So I guess uh, her son is very displaced at the moment. Um, he said the home is, is completely uninhabitable and uh, completely flooded. As I spoke the other day, and I was talking about what would be upcoming as far as floods 
and it would first start in the change of the seasons in the southern hemisphere. So uh, last week, Sydney, Australia, completely underwater, uh, devastating, devastating damage throughout that part of Australia. And now, just across the globe in the southern hemisphere, we see a massive storm come in and literally almost wipe out Durban. And Durban is a, a very large metropolitan area. Uh, two years ago, it was kind of devastated by very, very large riots. And um, they went on for days and days and days and the people just pretty much burned a lot of things down. Now, they were burning industry, buildings, stores, shopping malls. Uh, it was just a really, really bad scene. And that was one of the reasons why Dr. Elber's son wanted to finish up his studies and, and leave South Africa and, and, head to, uh, and head to Germany. Sorry, I'm a little tongue-tied and, and a little shocked at uh, what's transpiring. And how this hits so close to home you know uh, dr elbers has been here in the united states now since uh, july of 2017 and there are many days that she misses being back home in south africa well now there is no home to go to um What's going to transpire with her son, we, we, we don't know yet. Um, massive power outages, uh, water, uh, drinking water at a bare minimum. Um, I'll, I'll go over uh, some of the photographs with you. I believe this has um, some photographs from, from Twitter, which we will get into. And uh, this, this, this uh, city of Durban is a very, very nice area. Uh, they do have your Afrikan uh, settlers, as, as we would call them, uh, people from Europe that came hundreds and hundreds of years ago and settled in South Africa. And as time has gone on, uh, these communities and these cities have grown and they have developed, and they're just absolutely beautiful. As you see here, uh, this is a condominium right on the beach, gorgeous beach, uh, fairly new looking, um, uh, uh, probably very devastated. Uh, this photograph here, uh, this is obviously a city side street, uh, looks like a shopping mall area back in here. And uh, you can see the type of soil that uh, South Africa is kind of built on it in this area. It's kind of sandy. And you can see the, the subsidence with heavy rains that are just pretty much abnormal you know they get their share of rain folks don't get me wrong but when you get months and months and months of rain that just comes down in one day or a, a you know 12 hour period it's too much for the soil to handle especially sandy soil that you see right here and it just lets go and uh, that's what you get uh, here's a video of a South African gentleman that is uh, actually stuck. Uh, he was trying to go across a bridge. Well, the bridge no longer exists. I'll go ahead and play it. So what I'm presently looking at is the bridge at the bottom of Akats. You can see that's where the water's pouring over. That's the actual bridge where you cross over. There's uh, big branches over there. Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to get over this one today. Uh, so, you know, as you can see, I mean, that looks like a tropical rainforest right there. I have no idea what the uh, what the bridge actually looked like that he was going to cross over. Uh, this is one of the main rivers in this area. I believe this is uh, KwaZulu Natal. These are shipping containers. <laughs> yeah, they are kind of just thrown around like little building blocks that children would play with. Uh, how they are going to fix this, I have no idea. 
but this is some of the damage that has occurred uh, and this is right off of a highway there are, are very very major highways throughout this Durban area um, I did cover some flooding in this area that occurred I believe two years ago and it was uh, quite devastating but I don't believe as bad as this is as you can see this gentleman is holding a chainsaw uh, that car completely almost flipped over on its side uh, trees have crushed the, uh, the the car itself and uh, just more than a well just more than a day ago right here as you see what this heading says right there I don't even want to use that word while I'm doing any type of video because um, that that word right there those two words that you see right here well you really you got to be careful using and mentioning those words uh, on social media platforms because you will eventually start to get uh, censored I'm kind of trying to watch what I say um, but it's very very unfortunate um, you know, it's it's it breaks my heart because this woman has been through so much over the course of the last five years, dedicating everything to just bringing out the truth, so people like me and you can start to understand what is happening instead of being lied to by our governments. You know, she kind of sacrificed everything to bring out the truth, and uh, this is what you get. You, what do they call it now? You, you get canceled. Well, that's what they did to Dr. Elbers uh, throughout 2016 and uh, half of 2017. They tried to cancel her, and um, they kind of did a good job. You know, until she got here to the United States and uh, she decided to start writing some books, which uh, out of the 12 books that we we wrote, I co-authored, uh, I believe, 11 of them. And um, those books actually got censored in, in several countries uh, back in 2018 and 19, and I believe in 2020. And I believe they are still censored and you cannot buy them in, in some of these countries. Uh, I'd have to go through the list and, and see what countries uh, they are. But we were notified by the publisher uh, shortly after that the books would not be able to be published. But as you can see here, a report from Johannesburg on the 12th from Reuters. At least 45 people were killed after Monday's intensely heavy rainfall in South Africa's eastern coastal province of Zwazulu, Natal. Flooding, settlements, ravaged homes, swept away roads, and displaced dozens. Uh, I believe this number of dozens is uh, probably in the hundreds, if not thousands, because these are very, very heavily populated areas. The provincial government, which confirmed the number of dead, said in a statement, the death toll could rise further and warned heavy rain would continue until evening in the coastal parts of the province. Very, very sad. Just, you know, kind of gut-wrenching. And, uh, you know, folks, whenever I put out this information and you, you, you listen to my voice in these videos, always remember one thing. I'm not here as some type of YouTuber looking for status or stardom or YouTube views. This is my only way, my only way of trying to communicate with the world I mean if I had other means believe me I would be standing on top of that mountaintop shouting but you know I've I've had my problems and issues over the years with people trying to make me keep my mouth shut 
but I don't want to get into all of that right now. Now is not the time and place for that. But whenever I mention to you or I tell you that these things are going to occur, trust me on it. I just I just mentioned this the last two live streams and premieres that I did. I was mentioning this this flooding. Now, as things progress in the northern hemisphere and we move further into spring and summer, things are going to transfer. So these heavy rains, they're going to transfer to the northern hemisphere and we're going to see the same thing. And then this will transfer over from the United States right over into Europe. Now you remember, I, I, I talked about all of that. Okay, and I, and I also talked about each and every one of you, despite what you think, please be prepared. It doesn't take much for one day to, you know, put together, uh, what do they call them, like a bug out bag. Um, I used to call them a bug out bin. I went to Walmart years ago and I bought two, two of those large plastic bins and inside of those bins I have canned goods, uh, some cookware like a pot and pan. I also bought one of those Coleman camping stoves with a small propane uh, canister, a few extra propane canisters. There's a large flashlight in there. There's a lot of batteries in there. There are rechargeable batteries if, in, if in fact, I'm able to, uh, you know, get electricity at any point in time during an emergency. Uh, there are food products in there. Um, there's some uh, medical uh, stuff in there in case you get cut or something like that. You could buy. Uh, a, a medical kit on Amazon for, you know, maybe 20 bucks or whatever, just something for an emergency. I have all of these things packed away in these bug out bins and the bins are big enough to fit in my back seat of my car. Um, so in worst case scenario, something happens in my neighborhood, my neck of the woods, I'm able to throw both of these bins in the back seat of my car and haul ass and at least get to somewhere that is safe. I have a lockbox um, which houses all of my uh, important papers. Uh, important papers are also in Ziploc baggies with the air squeezed out of them and also I did take a box of extra Ziploc bags, small, medium, and large, just in case you need something to house a cell phone or something electronic that you do not want to get wet or damaged. So just some just some tips. So, you know, we, we see what is going on here in South Africa, and I was just jumping over here to Twitter, and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just more devastation. You can see from this news agency right here, um, this young gentleman, he's talking about the flooding. You could see the damage, the damage behind him. And, and, and what's sad is just like any other community or big city, there's a, how can I say, maybe a, a depressed area, uh, lower income, if, if you want to call it. Maybe the houses aren't built as strong and uh, those folks tend to get hit the hardest and as you can see behind you all of that erosion that land is now gone those homes are now gone no running water no electricity nothing uh, these are things that 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 are going to occur again and again and again as we continue to go through these earth changes. Let's just call it that. Let's call them earth changes for now. So as I pan through here, uh, you can see this area here flooded, flooded, flooded. I mean, this is just, uh, this is just really, really bad. Really, really bad. 
relief funds have already uh, been in place uh, to try to help these folks out. There's a very dangerous situation where you see that beautiful house there. Uh, all of the land that supported that house back over here is now gone. The sea, the ocean, has claimed it. Um, you can see people were trying to lock up their properties, uh, but the flooding, you know, just, I mean, that's not going to really do any good. But looting, yes, looting will occur, will probably occur right now as we're speaking, because people will be looking for food, they will be looking for water, and then you have those others that will be looking to just take advantage. Um, this is, uh, I believe, one of the individuals that is in the government there in Durban. And I guess he's having a moment of prayer as he kneels down and prays. Um, here you can see another news report. You can see the, uh, the devastating water. They're now claiming in this news report right there, you could see at least 60 dead and dozens missing. Uh, very, very sad. Um, kind of on a creepy note. Uh, oops, I went kind of past it there. Uh, cemeteries. A lot of cemeteries. Uh, well, they get flooded, and because they do not bury the dead that far deep, um, when the cemeteries tend to get flooded and eroded, the caskets come up to what would be the new ground level. And uh, skeletal remains kind of get uh, scattered everywhere. Devastating. I believe I saw a picture of it uh, in one of these Twitter feeds. It was uh, pretty horrific. Uh, this is another area of the uh, Durban area. You can see these cars. They are just about, some of them almost at rooftop, some of them two-thirds of the way. These vehicles here, devastated. They are now victims of the flood waters. Um, I believe this was a bridge that is a bridge or a road. I believe that's a, a bridge that is no longer there. Uh, there was a small river inlet running underneath there. That river inlet ran up all the way and uh, probably destroyed that bridge. Uh, oh, here is here's the photograph that I was talking about. When the cemeteries get overrun by the, uh, the floodwaters, uh, unfortunately, the dead are now disturbed, and um, they end up just kind of washed away, you know, I guess. Now, a lot of you may think this is a funny video here, but it's not. Uh, this gentleman right here, this young guy, he's literally floating in his living room. I mean, he's literally showing you in this video how much water is in his living room. And this is his living room. You can see the front door is open right there. Um, that door is probably about uh, seven and a half feet tall. And that looks like there's probably close to close to two feet of water that is now in his house. And uh, I'm not sure if he suffered any kind of subsidence. Um, in this video here, that looks to be either a truck, something floating down. Let me just go ahead and zoom back to that. I believe that's either a container or a truck. This literally floating down through. The floodwaters, uh, absolutely sad scenes of people trying to escape. And, um, ah, you know. But you're looking at the damage of what occurred and um, not a good scene. You know, many, many sad people losing their homes, uh, losing everything. Uh, you could see the house is collapsing there. The ground just being completely eroded away. Uh, people injured terribly. And uh, this storm kind of came out of nowhere. I'm go ahead and jump out of here. And I'm going to show you guys 
this is I'll just pan back here a little bit so we could get a good picture of what we're looking at here this is the whole continent of Africa here and you could see some pretty pretty hostile storms up here in the central part of Africa a lot of this is heat and with some storms and they tend to move very quickly and they'll move off of the coast and this is where all of our hurricanes come from right up here in this left hand corner but down here in South Africa well they're very very close to the Arctic or the Antar Antarctica the South Pole so what is there the jet stream and as I showed you guys in the last two uh, live stream premieres that I did the last two videos I showed you guys how erratic and how broken the jet stream is and how the jet streams are sinking in the northern hemisphere and rising in the southern hemisphere so rising would be coming upward this way and as these air currents and I believe I could go ahead and put this into motion and uh, we'll go ahead and hide this so you have Madagascar here but you can see the turbulence and this is not the rainy season this is not the rainy season in South Africa period so you can see uh, Durban is right down here so I'm gonna go ahead and just stop this so we could get a better look at where this storm came in I'm gonna to try to inch it in here it's a little hard to do because there was so much so right there right there is Durban right there where that this arch is here well you could see the massive massive amount of rain and the massive area that it covered as you move further up uh, this is getting closer to where Dr. Elbers lived. That Johannesburg is right just a little further up. And as these storms came in, well, they just kept coming in. And we could, we could inch forward, or is that backwards? Let me just pan out here. And as they came in and swept across, uh, that was pretty violent right there. Um, yeah, you could see... and how it just lingered and then it wrapped around you see that how it just wrapped around and now it's pretty much clear what will be coming I believe will uh, based on the weather they may they may get some more uh, potential rain it, it all depends on these crazy air currents that literally will be wrapping around and bringing in moisture from the ocean right across the Cape downward. They may get hit again. Um, we'll see. I'll, I'll be keeping a, a close eye on all of that. One thing I, I wanted to talk to all of you folks about again is uh, what's happening in the United States. Just let me go ahead and get over to the proper band. No, that's not what I wanted there. Do, do, do. Oh, here it is here. Um, right up here in the uh, Pacific Northwest and over, this, this is a massive snowstorm. A massive snowstorm. Uh, they've been warning people about it for the last... Uh, almost two days now and it's broken over the Canadian border into the United States and um, if you've been watching the news maybe turn on the weather channel or something like that they're they're talking about it quite heavily and they're warning people to watch out for uh, what this has in store so we can kind of and it's 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 curling around in a vortex almost like a hurricane so that was in the past and look at this eruption you see all of this well in Iowa 
yesterday, devastating tornado once again. And, and, and that's what I keep talking about, folks, is uh, paying very close attention to, to your weather during these times of these earth changes. Because these weather systems, as you could see just by me clicking here, uh, we'll go into nighttime there, and there we go. But look, look. Um, just let me go back here. I want you to pay attention how this generated. Here, in these four states, one, two, three, four, there's nothing. Some clear sky, some clouds, not much of anything. Now watch this. One, two, three. You see it starting to form right there. Now watch this. Six, what is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And look at this. This is uh, this was very devastating. Uh, same thing occurring down here, coming out of eastern Texas, northern Louisiana, Arkansas. Um, very, very, very rough weather. And you could see how this storm system expanded, dumping rain, tornadoes, and uh, it's heading my way. Uh, I'm here in the Pittsburgh area. We had some freak weather yesterday. Started out very cold, um, very cold. Let's just put it that way. Uh, by mid-afternoon, some very light rains and drizzles, dreary gray skies, and then all of a sudden, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, the clouds disappeared, the sun came out, and the temperature jumped all the way up to 77 degrees. Talk about freak weather. From 42 to 77 in a matter of hours. So, you know, very, <laughs> very, very odd uh, weather. Um, so keep an eye out, you know, things are going to be occurring over the course of the next couple of days as this storm system moves across the United States through the center part and making its way to the East coast. I don't know what exactly is going to transpire just yet. Uh, you know, the weatherman says one thing, but then, you know, kind of something else occurs before we jump over to some space weather. Let's jump over to the Null School and let's take a look at the jet stream because this tells it all. Okay, so here we are. And I'm going to go ahead and just stop this so we can see it a little more clearly. And let's zoom in. Well, there is right there what looks like this blue V. Well, that is your cold front that is just being sucked downward by that jet stream and that huge trough that looks like a like a big V right there. And look what converged. Another part of the broken jet stream that has warmth, hot air in it, and it collides. Well, naturally, you'll get the, the cold winter storm up here and what was right here what did we see right here in this area and all through this area here we saw that huge storm erupt over uh, uh, Iowa and several of those states and then Iowa had a huge tornado rip through it I posted a picture of it in the community section on the Planet X News YouTube channel and we'll go over that in in a few minutes but uh, as this system progresses, um, you're going to see more activity here in northeastern Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Mississippi. Depending on where the currents go, that could bring it up my way into the northeast, or it could take it straight across into the south, over into the states of North and South Carolina, as well as uh, Virginia. So these are all things to watch out for over the next several days leading into the weekend. Um, just, just devastating. If we pan down here and we move over to uh, South Africa right here, 
but we just take a look at the jet stream in Antarctica. Look at this vortex. Look at this. And that's, that is right over, let's spin it around so we don't get dizzy. That is right off of the coast of South America. So I haven't checked the weather, what's going on in the southern portion of South America, but it looks like it's probably devastating. And I will be checking into that in the next couple of hours. But the, the jet stream is so erratic it's nowhere near normal, nowhere near normal. And, and, and in our lifetimes, it's never going to go back to normal. So these are the earth changes that we're going to have to get used to and prepared for. And we have to learn about them. We have to educate ourselves because remember what I say all the time. Knowledge is power. Knowledge kind of reduces a little bit of that fear because you, you understand what is happening, you know what is happening, and you could digest it. You can comprehend it a little bit more and keep your head clear, especially in an emergency situation. But let's take a look at what just happened here in, uh, in South Africa. Um, I could actually go back... Oops, actually, I want to go forward. Oh, no, I do. I want to go back. And we'll go to right there. Now, as I progress through there, you see the uh, jet stream runs the opposite way in the southern hemisphere. Okay? So you can see what caused the flooding and the torrential downpour and the weather system to develop right off of the coast and just literally, I mean, you could see it with your own eyes. It's color-coded. You could see the push of the jet stream up in here, and then you could see another part of it pushing in here, and then what did it produce? It produced catastrophic flooding that cost people their property, and their lives. And, and you know, folks, I, I see people sometimes, they'll leave comments and say, well, oh, you know, I live here or I live there and that's, you know, I don't have to worry about that. That's, that's not going to affect me. Listen, you know how the old saying goes, hey, don't mess with Mother Nature? Well, you know, Mother Nature and especially Mother Nature on steroids, as, as we now have it, is quite more powerful than you are. So don't ever underestimate what can happen just because your false sense of security where you live. And you think just because you live where you live, you're not going to be a victim of some type of weather disaster. It can come at any time. And the weather systems are getting very strong. Let's just put it that way. And uh, we could take a look at the completely, I don't even know what the hell you want to call it. The jet stream's completely jacked up is what I call it. And just by holding the, the globe this way over the United States, you can see these massive dips, massive dips, these huge troughs in the jet stream. Ladies and gentlemen, that is completely abnormal. Completely. And if this scenario stays in effect as it is throughout the the rest of the spring and into the summer, the weather in the United States of America is going to be so erratic. And that goes for Canada. That goes for you Canadians also. You guys are going to experience maybe the kind of opposite of what we're getting. So 
if we're getting extreme heat, you guys may be getting some colder temperatures. If we go through a dry spell, you guys may be going through a very severe wet spell. But we'll see how it pans out. As time progresses, you can see one, two, three troughs moving across the Atlantic Ocean over to Europe. Now, this is what's been happening over the last couple of years. These troughs continue. They wiggle across the pond, and you see right where they're going to hit. Right here in this area, which encompasses the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, Denmark, France, Spain, the UK is kind of in this little itty bitty Goldilocks zone where where they don't they don't get the brunt of what's been happening but that is going to change that is going to change so I would say parts of the southern portion of UK uh, from London south are going to see their fair share of very very violent weather this is going to transpire all the way over into Eastern Europe. And we already know what's going on in the Ukraine. Millions and millions of people displaced. And the last thing they need is, is upcoming devastating weather that will just not cooperate. And the rest of the world, well, hell, they're all going to be in, uh, yeah, yeah, they're going to be in a little bit of trouble. But anyhow, um, man, what I wanted to show you folks is uh, this big monster right here. A few days ago. I showed you guys some animated graphs from the back side of the sun. We talked about that huge hole that opened up on the back side of the sun. Why did it open up? How did it open up? They referred to its scientists as dead sunspots. I completely disagree. I completely disagree. Because sunspots don't open up into big dark coronal hole openings like this they either dissipate cancel each other out they just disappear now that monster as i said a few days ago will be waiting for it over the course of the next several days as it rotates around and um, what is going to develop? Well, what developed was the uh, those two big, gigantic filament releases that I did the uh, the space weather video. I'm sorry I didn't have time to narrate it. I was just kind of a loss for time. And uh, well, here we go. Now this this uh, angstrom of ultraviolet light the number 211 you see it right down here 211 this purple color well this allows us to really really see clearly coronal holes and when these coronal holes those black regions that is basically like the the atmosphere of the sun breaking open and releasing all of these super heavy uh, charged particles just spewing out of the sun and just spewing into space and headed directly for the earth and they will pass through the earth and they will pass by and out into infinity in space but it is these large coronal openings that push these it's called solar wind pushes these, these very large, powerful solar winds towards the Earth. Now, I argued for years 
and science debated me. And I said that these heavily charged particles coming from large coronal holes, once they penetrate the, the surface of the earth, travel far into the mantle to the core and they heat the core up therefore causing internal pressure which causes massive earthquakes a day or two later so science debated me on that for years and then all of a sudden after they kicked me in the teeth and pushed me aside science came out and agreed so anywho this is where we're at now so now we're staring down the barrel of that monster that you see right here and you know sometimes they will just close up and they won't cause any problems whatsoever and this one looks to be just kind of percolating and uh, the 48 hour loop kind of cuts off so we'll have to wait another 24 hours however if you watch right here watch right here in the center as this replays and you'll see just watch right in that section and you'll see what happens and you'll see those two filament releases which were very very long and that was directed straight towards the earth now nothing to be afraid of nothing to be scared of but as time goes on those large filament releases will get bigger and they will get more powerful and yes they will have no problem reaching the earth now you know throughout history we've kind of really never had a problem with this but there are other factors at play now. There is another stellar object that is disturbing the sun, interacting with the sun, and increasing the magnitude of these disturbances. So again, you know, these situations that are brewing on the sun, well, this is the same as the weather on Earth. It's being magnified. And you know, if you magnify something, well, naturally, the terminology says it's getting bigger. So the opportunity is there for substantial damage to the Earth's magnetic field because it's going to squeak by and it's going to get through. The other big factor is the potential damage to electrical grids. And that's something that we just cannot do without. I mean, just imagine. You see how long it, it takes for um, the electrical grid to get back up after a major hurricane. Look what happened to Puerto Rico. It took, what, two years after that one devastating hurricane wiped out the entire electrical grid. Hospitals were in jeopardy. People lost their lives because of electricity, not having it. So that was a pretty devastating pop right there. Um, really, really cool imagery coming from the SDO. Um, I believe we can uh, we can check it out real quick on the uh, the 304. We might be able to see it. You'll see it right here. It will look like uh, kind of wavy looking darker strands. There you go. You were able to see it right there. Now, in more violent situations, uh, that would make its way all the way to the earth. 93 million miles, folks, in space is not that far. Especially for a star as big as the sun. You know, 
we really can't fathom how large the sun really is. 865,000 miles in diameter. 865,000 miles in diameter. And the earth is just this little tiny little dot situated right about there where my cursor is. So I'll leave the cursor there and we'll wait for the filament releases. And it was almost like a, a dead-on bullseye. You see that? So it's situations like what you're seeing on your screen right now that could happen that could completely destroy our electrical grid. One minute your lights are on, the next minute... You got nada. Zip, zero, zilch, you got nothing. And what? You think your electric company is going to just send you a little text message and say, oh, Mr. or Mrs. Consumer, we will have your electric back on within the hour. Well, that text message ain't coming. Because if electrical grids get fried, it will take years, years, and there will be upheavals in this country as well as any country. All hell will break loose. When people go hungry and thirsty, and then you have your opportunity seekers, the United States will become a very, very different place. It doesn't matter what country it is. The outcome will be the same. So this is what we're looking at. And I know, again, you know, I know space weather might not be very interesting to a lot of you, but I feel that, you know, it is something that all of us should learn and take into consideration because of the, the, the time that we're in now. You know, if this was 50 years ago, yeah, space weather would be boring. But now we're relying on space weather because we really do need to know what is going on out there with our star that give us life but also can take life away in a heartbeat. And it's not like the earth hasn't been disturbed by events produced by the sun. The Carrington event, 1850. Which a lot of people don't talk about the amount of earthquakes that occurred at that point in time that were devastating. They always talk about the telegraph wires burning. And, you know, the, the, uh, little, the little electrical grid that they had going on at that time that was very medieval, fried. Now, all of our cars rely on electronics. Everything on the grid relies on electronics. Well, those will be fried. You think you're going to pick up your your telephone, your cell phone, and uh, put a put a post out there on Twitter or Instagram or TikTok or on Facebook. Oh, we lost power. No, because your cell phone's not going to work. Your automobile, your car is not going to work. All those electrical vehicles that they're uh, pushing right now, uh-uh, they're not going to work. Your power grids will go down. No heat, no electricity, no cooling, nothing. We will be thrust back into medieval times, at least, <laughs> at least the 15th, 16th century. It will be barbaric within a very short amount of time if anything like that occurs. If it does, I hope I'm dead and gone by then, because I sure as hell wouldn't want to live through that. Because you may be forced to do things that you never thought in a million years that you were ever capable of doing. 
But anyways, folks, when I put these videos out there about uh, space weather, uh, what's happening out there, again, you know, some of you may think that it's uh, a little boring, um, but <laughs> yeah, why is this not playing? I wanted to show you guys the uh, the latest coming from Cactus. And look look at the activity. I mean, this is just uh, April, just the beginning of April. And here we are on the 11th. And uh, this bad boy, this blows off. And this was kind of towards the back side of the, the sun. And again, more things are occurring back there and and this is kind of a natural coronal mass ejection um this this has nothing to do with our stellar core planet x because it is already far below the ecliptic and it's on its way back up this way so i would say in in, in the course of the next several days less than a week um we'll be able to spot that bad boy somewhere within this vicinity where my cursor is and you will see very strong coronal mass ejections, very powerful coronal mass ejections on the western limb. As we're looking at the sun now, um, you would probably think that this would be the eastern limb and this would be the western limb, but it's the complete opposite. So the right-hand side will be the western limb of the sun. Um, or the right-hand side, yeah, that will be the western limb, left-hand side, eastern limb. So we'll see the activity uh, right over here. And we're, we're definitely going to see some activity from uh, what's transpiring right now on the sun. Very, very, uh, very, very high counts of, of sunspots forming. Both hemispheres of the sun. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's just a matter of time, folks. It's just a matter of time. Uh, this is from the 12th. This is from yesterday. This is giving you a coronagraph view the lasco c2 in extreme ultraviolet light which you don't get to see really too much but here on the difference model you can see the output uh it just just looks like a wreck i mean it is a star it is a sun um you know they're not just little quiet things that sit out there in space they have their moments. Uh, some of what you're seeing is pretty natural. But like I said, in the course of the next several days, you're going to have that object coming upward from below the ecliptic. It's going to start disturbing the sun. We'll see uh, outputs right around this region, this region, and this region. Uh, this could last over the course of 7 to 10 days. So we'll see that. Wait for the videos because they're going to be coming. That much you can guarantee. We're going to take a quick look right here, and I'm going to show you. This is the coronal mass ejection or the CME tracker. And here you have the Earth right here in yellow. And uh, this also shows you where some of the satellites are located. The uh, the uh, the scale or the uh, the scale. Um, this shows you Earth, Mars, Mercury, Venus, and uh, Parker Space Probe, um, Stereo A and B. And the middle is the Sun. The little orange ball right there moving around, well, that's little Mercury getting slammed. But Mercury moves kind of fast uh, when it's on the back side of the Sun, so it didn't get hit too hard. But we just went through... A, a very uh, hard uh, output from the sun that is coming our way by the 14th, which will create a lot of aurora in the uh, the northern hemisphere. Um, you know, folks, I don't know about you, but, you know, I've found out that uh, over the course of time, as I investigated all of this and learned more and more and more about the sun, um, I would always get at points in time these just nasty migraine headaches um, that would just come out of nowhere. 
I even went to the doctor about it. They couldn't find anything wrong with me, blah, 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 blah. And then as science started to investigate, uh, there were several scientific papers that came out and it talked about the effects of coronal mass ejections and the, the output energy from the sun at these points in time when extreme solar wind or coronal mass ejections impact the earth, the effects on the human body. And these headaches, these headaches were one of them. And then I started to learn about it and I started to judge, oh, here comes a coronal mass ejection. Impact time, you know, uh, the 14th. So, you know, I'm expecting between the 14th and the 16th for me to come down with another blasting migraine. And I get it all over the whole entire top of my head, just to the point where, and, and behind my eyes, and I just want to rip my skull off. Nothing takes it away. Nothing. And it also, I get this ringing in my ears just out of nowhere. It, it, it will be this real high-pitched whining sound that will last for about a minute and then it will go away. So I don't know if any of you suffer from these effects. Uh, one of the other effects was uh, very severe pain in your joints, your knees, your hips, your back, your neck, your shoulders your ankles, larger joints in your body for some reason. These are the areas that are affected by this extreme output from the sun. So I really didn't get the migraines all that often before, but starting around 2016 is when I really, really started to get them bad. I mean, they were crippling. And then they would go away. And it would last for anywhere from 48 hours to about 72 hours, and then it was gone. Sometimes they were really, really bad. Sometimes they were kind of, you know, mild. I could deal with it. But man, when they were really, really bad, they just cripple you. You know, you're just completely miserable. I couldn't even see straight. My, it, it affected my vision. There were points in time where I was even afraid to drive a car or wouldn't even risk driving a car because I didn't want to cause an accident or get myself killed or kill somebody else. So, you know, once again, these are the effects. This is what we are up against. And again, you know, it's just some... Uh, good learning information, some good basic information. Uh, some of this may have answered questions that you may have of why you're getting periodic migraines or you're getting these pains in your joints at times and you don't know why. You don't have arthritis. You don't have osteoporosis. You know, you're relatively young or middle-aged and all of a sudden, you know, you wake up that one morning and you're like, oh my God, my knees, my back, you know, my ankles, I get it in my knees really bad. I don't know why, just that part of my DNA that it affects. But anyhow, once again, folks, coming over to this community tab on the Planet X News YouTube channel's homepage, click on that community tab. Okay, and um, I always put this information up there. I posted about an hour ago the article to the BBC concerning the South African flooding in Durban. You can click on there and you could read that article. Uh, five hours ago, uh, I got a photograph sent to me from one of our subscribers who lives in Iowa. And this is what passed by. Look at that monster. I mean, it... You know, the most I've ever seen is a water spout. When I lived in Miami, I saw a massive water spout one day. 
uh, out in the ocean right off of Miami Beach, and it looked like it was heading right for downtown Miami, and at the last second, it kind of turned and went right back up into the sky. But I've never personally in my life seen anything like that. So I can only imagine how much your heart rate rises if you're looking out your door or looking out your window of your house, and that's what you see. And that did cause a lot of devastation. Um, I snapped this photograph from the SDO Solar Dynamics Observatory uh, about five hours ago as that massive hole was moving our way. And I outlined it so we can see, or you guys can see what I was talking about in the text up here. And since then, it has shrunk down to that smaller, uh, that smaller hole. But that smaller coronal hole is really not small. <laughs> you could probably fit about, I don't know, a thousand, five thousand Earths inside of it. And we're probably going to be talking about that a little bit more within the next 24 to 48 hours as we see what, what transpires. All of these areas that you see that are in white up here all over, these are all active regions on the sun producing extreme amounts of energy that can pop at any time. They can produce large filament and plasma releases. They can produce large coronal mass ejection releases. Or they could just stay looping, connecting, reconnecting, back and forth that you you know you'll see these uh, large loops coronal loops and um, real quick folks I don't know if any of you saw what I posted here 11 hours ago um, I cannot talk about this subject on social media at all okay just can't do it um, I would advise each and every one of you that, that are listening to this video right now, um, take, I, I believe take 45 minutes. I, I believe this video is 45 minutes long. Take 45 minutes of your time. Click on that link. Okay. And that will take you to the Planet X News website. The only thing that I could think to do to protect myself is to embed that video into a website article. Okay? And this is just the picture. It's just a picture here. But if you just pan down a little bit and click right there and watch that video do yourself a service watch that video and then I mean if you want um, you could either go up here to Facebook and you can share this article which is really not an article but I, I just I had no other way to reach out there and get it out to all of you without getting myself in trouble and I don't want any trouble but you could go ahead and you can share this on Facebook you can share it on Twitter um, if you want to send it to somebody in a, in a in a private message just go right up here to your URL window and just hit copy and then you can go to Facebook and you can you know uh, uh, message it to somebody just by clicking on the little message box and click left or right click paste and paste that link into a private message you could do the same thing on Twitter or, or wherever if you want to text it to somebody and you have a text service on your computer you could simply 
copy and paste that link right in the text and send it to somebody. But I, I really felt that uh, this information provided within that 47 minutes of video, I think all of you, all of you, no matter what state you're in, no matter what country you're in, I think that you owe it to yourself to watch it and absorb it. And then after you watch it and you absorb it, do your friends and family members a service and let them watch it. Okay? So listen, very sad day, uh, you know, for, uh, for Dr. Elber's you know, losing her former home there in South Africa. Uh, we don't know exactly what her son's going to be doing at this point in time. I'll see what's going to happen next time he calls. I'll get an update on that. And I will definitely be back to do some updates on this incoming uh, solar storm. It seems like we're having one every couple of days. There are also other current events transpiring on this globe that we should talk about, we should learn about, we should keep up on. And uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention, it just slipped my mind. Where did it go? Oh, earthquakes. Now that we're going to have this solar stream coming in, this solar wind from the last coronal mass ejection, we'll probably get like a little bit of a double impact. But I want you guys to watch for the large earthquakes magnitude six and above within the next 72 hours because that's normally after the impact that's normally how long it takes for the particles to penetrate through the earth's crust and cause the pressure buildup and the disturbance within the core that will produce the earthquakes we may also see some uh, volcanic activity so that can all transpire, I would say, anytime between uh, tomorrow and within the next three to four days. So we may be talking about some of that subject matter this upcoming weekend. Okay, folks? Well, listen, I'm out of here. Stay safe. And I appreciate all of the support and all of the thank yous and all of the very nice comments. Listen, folks, I really, really do appreciate it. It's a little hard for me to get back and answer every single one of you. I, I try to do my best on that. But, um, you know, you guys have really humbled me over the past few months. I want to thank everybody who has donated and contributed for Dr. Elber's medical fund. That has been a huge huge plus and a burden off of the both of us because we're, we're trying to get her in for this uh, this stem cell therapy by the beginning of July. It's a lot of money. $15,000 is a lot of money. But we were able to at least uh, secure a, a, a time frame within the first two weeks of July. So if anybody else would like to contribute, the link is in the description box under any, any video on, uh, on the Planet X News YouTube channel. I'll uh, we'll just go right here, and uh, it's right there. Donations for Dr. Elber's Medical Fund are greatly appreciated, and there is the link right there to PayPal. And listen, folks, if you can't, make a contribution or a donation, don't worry about it. Keep both of us in your prayers. That is greatly appreciated also. Okay, folks. Well, listen, until then, I will see you again. Stay safe and stay tuned to Planet X News. Take care, folks.